But we did them. We did a lot of ah, ha, ha, hui, ha. A lot of 20 minute fight scenes where all they're going is hui, ha, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> That was the Kung Fu movies. Anyway, uh, so we were going along and finally, nothing was really making a big dent into television. Uh, most of it went out on video or played on the, some of the new cable stations which were just forming. Uh, and uh, finally, we got a project called Robotech. And uh, Carl Masick was the producer. And Robotech was a big show. It hit me. I played, uh, I got the part of Rico, the, uh, one of the Zentradi spies, for the first, uh, I guess for the first 33 episodes. And then I played incidental characters. And then Robotech hit it big playing on, uh, I think it was Channel 5 in LA. But it had a good time slot, and it just got a real big following. So uh, that was my first big major show. That, and uh, that was the first show I started, uh, I started writing for. Uh, I started writing for the, uh, the Robotech. Actually, it's a funny way of the way I got into writing. Nobody would hire me without a sample of writing. They said, what have you done before? I said, well, I haven't done anything, but I've been dubbing for four years, five years. You know my work is a, well, writing is different. Blah, 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 blah. All this bold. So finally, I was able to get a job writing for uh, uh, a studio called Magnum Studios. And uh, the film was a, a, a porno movie. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's all oh. they would hire me for. And, uh, Whoa. Unfortunately, well, he, I said to him, what are you doing this stuff for? He says, well, the people who own this stuff are the only people that come in and pay cash. And I'm satisfied with the product without, the, without complaining. And, uh, you know who it was. It was the, uh, no. And they were very good customers and very honorable. Whereas some of these other companies, they take eight months to pay the studio. The studio would front out all this money for salaries and such. It would take two, three months to pay or eight months to pay. Like it was retail. But, uh, so I did the, uh, the porno film, and it was called The Bitch to San Falu. And it had all the, all the requisites. It had uh, a lot of, ooh, ah, hmm. <laughs> you had to write them all as if it was lines. You had to write all the, all the reactions in a big, in a big uh, group. I'll show you more when we do uh, ADR writing, which is tomorrow, Sunday. Yeah. Where the heck is it? It's not on this. How could that be? It's tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock. It's not on this schedule. This is weird. Uh, is it on your schedule? Anime writing? Ins and outs of anime writing. Five, five oh, it's today! <laughs> Good memory, Ron. Yes, come to that panel to see, to see how that's done. And I won't have a lot of demonstration of those reactions. Uh, anyway, uh, Robotech was the first major thing that I worked in. Uh, and then, uh, as Robotech was ending, uh, we found Saban Entertainment. And uh, in the meantime, I had done a lot of, uh, I had done, uh, oh, I did a major movie, uh, Smokes and the Magic Flute. 
I think that was in 1984. Smurfs and the Magic Food played in movie theaters all over the country. It was, uh, I did five voices in that. I did Schemer Smurf, and I did an Irish fisherman, and uh, just a bunch of incidental voices. It was a nice showcase for me. Uh, Then we found Saban Entertainment. Saban Entertainment, Intersound was on Sunset Boulevard. Saban Entertainment was what's called Over the Hill in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, they were on Ventura Boulevard. And uh, I don't expect anybody to know this, where it is. But uh, Saban Entertainment was doing, just getting into doing ADR. Saban Entertainment started out doing theme music for TV shows and feature films. They did the theme music for The Hitchhiker. Uh, oh, just tons of TV shows. And uh, they owned the rights to everything they did. They wouldn't sell the rights out outright. And uh, Haim Savan, a very smart businessman, and Shuki Levy, two smart businessmen, they built up a lot of distribution contacts on how to distribute in, in the English-speaking markets all over the world. So they started doing ADR stuff, and it was anime. So I went over there and I said, hey, I've been doing Robotech and a whole bunch of stuff at Intercept. Yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in. Uh, in those days, they just welcomed me in. Now it's, you gotta, I don't know, I have, to, I have to introduce myself all over again to people I worked for 10 years ago. <coughs> it's weird. <coughs> But uh, uh, as the salaries went up, the competition got stiffer because more people were getting into voiceovers. And stuff. We were finally making a, we finally worked up to uh, 35 an hour, two hour minimum, and then 50 an hour. Now it's, it's around 75 an hour with the two hour minimum. So it makes it worthwhile to go in. You could work three jobs and make a living for the, for the week. Uh, 